Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. We're excited to have you here with us today as we explore amazing and large-scale goose farming in China. So sit back, relax, and let's get started.
In recent years, with the growth of the Chinese economy and increased demand for poultry products, Chinese goose farming has undergone significant commercialization and modernization. Large-scale goose farms have emerged, equipped with advanced breeding techniques, automated feeding systems, and climate-controlled facilities to ensure optimal conditions for geese throughout the year. The introduction of advanced breeding methods has led to the development of new breeds with improved growth rates, disease resistance, and meat quality. This has helped meet the rising demand for high-quality goose products, not only domestically but also in international markets. One unique aspect of Chinese goose farming is the implementation of free-range systems. Farmers often allow the geese to roam freely during the day, allowing them access to natural pastures where they can forage and graze on grass, insects, and aquatic plants. This method not only provides the geese with a natural and varied diet but also helps reduce feed costs for farmers. Furthermore, the integration of modern marketing strategies and increased government support has played a crucial role in promoting Chinese goose farming. Various promotional activities, such as goose festivals and culinary events, have created awareness and increased the popularity of Chinese goose products nationwide. The processing of goose farming involves several steps, from breeding and hatching to raising, harvesting, and preparing the geese for various products. Here is a step-by-step -step description of the process. 1. Breeding and Hatching The process begins with selectively breeding healthy and high-quality geese to obtain desirable traits in their offspring. Incubation of eggs takes place in specialized facilities or incubators, where the eggs are maintained at the optimal temperature and humidity until they hatch. Incubating goose eggs requires creating the right temperature and humidity conditions to mimic a mother goose's nest. Obtain fertile goose eggs. Ensure that you have fresh, fertile eggs. Prepare the incubator. Clean the incubator thoroughly to maintain a sterile environment. Set it up according to the manufacturer's instructions. Generally, you will need to fill the water channels in the incubator to maintain humidity levels. Set the temperature. Geese eggs typically require a temperature between 99 to 101 degrees Fahrenheit, 37 to 38 degrees Celsius for successful incubation. Use a reliable thermometer to monitor and adjust the temperature as necessary to maintain a stable range. Monitor humidity. Goose eggs require higher humidity levels compared to other birds. Aim for a humidity level of around 50 to 55 percent for the first 25 days. Then increase it to 65 to 70 percent for the last few days of incubation. Maintain humidity by regularly filling the water channels in the incubator. Rotate the eggs. To mimic the mother goose's natural behavior, rotate the eggs three times per day. Mark one side of the egg with an X and the other side with an O. During each rotation, alternate the placement of the eggs so the X side is facing up and then down. Candle the eggs. After a few days of incubation, you can use a process called candling to check the development of the embryos. Using a bright light source, carefully hold the egg against the light to observe the internal changes and signs of growth. Maintain ventilation. It is crucial to ensure proper ventilation in the incubator to maintain fresh air flow. Consult the incubator's manual for any specific instructions regarding ventilation settings. Wait for hatching. Goose eggs typically take around 28 to 30 days to hatch. During this period, continue to monitor the temperature and humidity levels, rotate the eggs, and maintain proper ventilation. Assist in hatching if necessary. In some cases, goslings may struggle to hatch on their own. If an egg remains unchanged for too long after others have hatched, it may be necessary to assist. Seek advice from an experienced breeder or veterinarian before taking any action.
2. Raising. Once hatched, the goslings are moved to brooder houses, where they are provided with appropriate heat, lighting, and ventilation. They are usually kept indoors for a few weeks until they develop feathers and are capable of regulating their body temperature. Goslings have specific dietary requirements for optimal growth and health. Here's what goslings eat and how to raise them. Brooding. After hatching, the goslings are usually kept in a brooder for approximately four to six weeks. They require a warm and controlled environment, with sufficient access to food and water. Feed. Start by providing commercially available gosling starter feed. These feeds are formulated to meet the nutritional needs of growing goslings. Ensure that the feed contains adequate protein, around 20 to 22 percent, for proper development. Water. Provide clean, fresh water at all times. Goslings should have constant access to water for hydration and digestion. Use shallow waterers or dishes to minimize the risk of drowning. Add greens and forage. Apart from starter feed, introduce chopped fresh greens and small amounts of finely minced fruits to their diet. Additionally, allow goslings to graze on fresh grass if available. These additions provide extra nutrients and help to develop a balanced diet. Monitor feed intake. Regularly observe the goslings, feeding behavior and adjust the amount of feed provided accordingly. Aim for consistent growth by ensuring they have an adequate amount of feed while avoiding overfeeding, which can lead to health issues. Supplement with niacin. Goslings, especially Chinese goslings, require additional niacin in their diet compared to other poultry. Niacin is essential for proper bone development. You can provide niacin by supplementing their feed with brewer's yeast or a specific niacin supplement. Consult a veterinarian or poultry expert for appropriate dosage. Provide suitable housing. Choose a suitable brooder area for the goslings, ensuring that it is clean, safe, and provides enough space for them to move around comfortably. Avoid drafts and provide heat lamps or a brooder box to maintain a warm temperature, around 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius for the first week. Gradually decrease the temperature by 5 degrees Fahrenheit, 2.8 degrees Celsius, each week until they are fully feathered and can regulate their body temperature. Practice socialization. Chinese goslings, like other geese, can be quite social. Spend time with them regularly, gently handling and interacting with them to promote bonding and reduce potential aggression as they grow older. Provide appropriate outdoor space. Once the goslings are older and have developed their feathers, provide them with access to a secure outdoor area. Ensure the space is predator-proof and has access to grass, foraging areas, and a clean water source. Monitor them closely during outdoor time to ensure their safety. Regular health checks. Regularly check the goslings for any signs of illness or injury. Keep their brooder area clean to minimize the risk of diseases. If you observe any unusual behavior or symptoms, consult a veterinarian with experience in poultry. Free-range grazing. As the goslings grow, they are gradually introduced to free-range systems. During the day, farmers allow the geese access to fenced or open pastures where they can roam freely and forage on natural grass, insects, and aquatic plants. While grazing is an essential part of their diet, geese also require supplementary feeding. Farmers provide balanced diets that include grains, corn, soybeans, and other nutrient-rich feed to ensure optimal growth and health. Some large-scale farms use automated feeding systems to streamline the process. Growing Stage From six weeks onwards, the goslings transition to a growing stage. During this period, they are usually allowed more space and freedom to roam, while still provided with proper nutrition and protection from predators. The growing stage typically lasts for about four to five months. Feather Development the transformation of downy plumage into feathers takes place gradually over several months. It generally takes around three to four months for the goslings to develop their full plumage.
To feed Chinese geese on a farm, here are some steps you can follow. Provide a balanced diet. Chinese geese need a balanced diet to stay healthy. Feed them a mix of grains, such as corn, barley, and wheat, along with leafy greens, vegetables, and fresh grass. Supplement with protein. Along with grains and greens, geese also require protein in their diet. Offer them sources of protein like fish meal, soybean meal, or dried mealworms. This will help with their growth and feather development. Ensure access to fresh water. Geese need access to clean and fresh water at all times. Place water troughs or shallow ponds within their reach, allowing them to drink and also to dip their heads and clean their eyes. Provide grit and calcium. Make sure to offer geese grit, which aids in digestion, by placing small stones or sand in their feeding area. Additionally, offer calcium sources such as crushed oyster shells, as geese require calcium for strong eggshells and overall bone health. Feed them on a schedule. Establish a feeding schedule for your geese, giving them regular meals throughout the day. This helps keep their digestion in check and prevents overeating. Aim for about two to three feedings per day. Monitor their food consumption. Observe how much your geese are eating and adjust the amount of food accordingly. Avoid overfeeding, as it can lead to obesity and health issues. On the other hand, make sure they are eating enough and not showing signs of malnutrition. Sexual Maturity Chinese geese in a farm environment typically reach sexual maturity at around 1.5 to 2 years of age. This means it can take approximately 18 to 24 months from the time they hatch until they become capable of breeding. Chinese geese typically begin laying eggs between 6 to 9 months of age, although this can vary slightly between individuals. It's important to note that not all geese will start laying eggs at the exact same age, as it can depend on factors such as genetics and environmental conditions. The average Chinese goose can lay around 40 to 60 eggs per year, but the number of eggs laid per day and per month can vary. Chinese geese generally lay one egg per day during their egg-laying season. However, it's not uncommon for them to skip a day or two between laying eggs. So, on average, a Chinese goose may lay between 3 to 5 eggs per week. If we consider that Chinese geese generally lay eggs during a 4 to 5 month period, spring through early summer, and calculate an average of 4 eggs per week during that period, they would lay approximately 64 to 80 eggs per year.
Breeding. Once the geese have reached sexual maturity, they can start breeding. The breeding season usually occurs in spring or early summer. The female lays her eggs, and the incubation period lasts approximately 28 to 30 days. Parental care. The eggs are either incubated by the female or using artificial means. After hatching, the parents or farm caregivers continue to provide care for the goslings for about six to eight weeks until they become more independent. Reproduction cycle repeats. Chinese geese in a farm setting commonly reproduce and raise young year after year. The time frames for each subsequent life cycle, including egg laying, incubation, and rearing of goslings, generally remain consistent with the initial cycle. 3. Health and Disease Control Farmers regularly monitor the geese for any signs of illness or disease and take preventive measures to ensure their health. Vaccinations, parasite control, and proper sanitation practices are implemented to minimize the risk of infections and maintain a healthy flock. Goose epidemic prevention in China refers to measures taken by the government and relevant authorities to control and prevent the spread of diseases among goose populations in the country. Since goose farming is an important industry in China, involving both domestic consumption and exports, preventing disease outbreaks is crucial for safeguarding public health and sustaining the economy. 4. Harvesting. The ideal time to harvest Chinese goose in a large-scale farm depends on various factors such as the purpose of production, market demand, and growth characteristics of the geese. However, there are some general guidelines that can be followed. Age and weight. Young geese, known as goslings, are typically harvested when they are about 12 to 16 weeks old and weigh around 7 to 9 pounds, around 3.2 to 4.1 kilograms. They are often more tender and have a milder flavor. Older geese, known as adults, can be harvested at any time but are usually harvested after they reach full maturity, around 24 to 30 weeks of age and weigh around 9 to 12 pounds, around 4.1 to 5.4 kilograms. Season. The time of year can also play a role in determining the ideal harvest time. Generally, Chinese geese can be harvested in late summer or early autumn when they have had sufficient time to grow and develop during the warmer months. Market demand. It is essential to consider market demand while deciding the harvest time. Conducting market research and assessing the demand for Chinese goose meat can help determine the appropriate timing. Harvesting when demand is high can help maximize profits and prevent overstocking. Growth rate. Monitoring the growth rate of the geese is crucial. If the growth rate is slower than expected, it may be necessary to delay the harvest to allow the geese to reach the desired size and weight. On the other hand, if the geese are growing rapidly, an early harvest may be required to prevent them from becoming too large and potentially affecting meat quality. Animal welfare. It is important to ensure the welfare of the geese by considering their health and condition. Harvesting too early or too late can result in compromised meat quality or health issues for the birds. Regular veterinary checks and quality control measures should be in place to ensure the geese are in optimal condition for harvest.
5. Meat Processing Chinese goose meat processing involves various steps, including slaughtering, gutting, cleaning, and preparing the goose meat for consumption. Here is a detailed description. Slaughtering The first step is to slaughter the goose humanely. Common methods include manual neck cutting or using special tools for this purpose. Scalding After slaughtering, the goose is immersed in hot water to loosen the feathers and make plucking easier. Typically, the bird is held by its wings or feet and dipped into a scalding tank for a short period of time. Plucking Once scalded, the feathers are removed. This can be done manually by skilled workers who quickly pluck the feathers from the goose's body. In some cases, mechanical plucking machines may also be employed to speed up the process. Evisceration. After plucking, the goose's internal organs are removed. This includes the lungs, liver, heart, intestines, and other digestive organs. The bird is carefully gutted to ensure all internal organs are properly taken out. Cleaning. The goose is thoroughly rinsed with water to remove any remaining traces of blood or impurities. This ensures hygiene and food safety standards are met. Cutting and Preparation Once cleaned, the goose is cut into different parts like wings, drumsticks, breast, and thigh. These parts are often further processed, such as deboning or marinating, depending on the intended use or recipe. Cooking The prepared goose meat can be used in a variety of dishes. 
Traditional Chinese recipes often involve stir-frying, roasting, braising, or making soups with goose meat. Different seasonings and spices may be added to enhance the flavor. Packaging and storage. The cooked or processed goose meat is packaged and labeled according to the required standards. It may be vacuum sealed or packed in different forms like canned or frozen, depending on the market demands. Proper storage conditions are maintained to ensure freshness and extend the shelf life. The packaged goods are then distributed to local markets, restaurants, or exported to international markets. Overall, Chinese goose meat processing involves several steps to ensure the quality, hygiene, and taste of the final product. These processes are usually carried out in specialized facilities or slaughterhouses equipped with modern machinery and skilled workers.
Low salt treatment. The extracted goose meat undergoes a specialized low salt treatment process. This involves marinating the meat in a brine solution with reduced sodium content. By controlling the salinity levels, the final product achieves a low salt profile while retaining its flavor and tenderness. Salting. Traditional salt curing methods are used to add flavor and preserve the meat. A mixture of salt, herbs, and spices is applied to the surface of the goose. The salt helps to draw out moisture and enhance the taste. Hanging and drying. The salted geese are then hung in a temperature and humidity-controlled environment for a specific period. This allows the meat to dry and develop a unique flavor. The drying time can vary, but it generally takes several weeks. Seasoning. After the drying process, the goose is often seasoned with additional herbs and spices to enhance the flavor profile. This step may involve coating the surface with a mixture of ingredients like soy sauce, ginger, garlic, and various condiments. Cooking and flavoring. The low salt goose meat is then cooked using various methods, such as roasting, boiling, or other traditional cooking techniques. Flavorings like herbs, spices, and natural ingredients are added to enhance the taste and aroma, ensuring a delicious end product. Quality assurance. Throughout the entire factory process, strict quality control measures are implemented. Regular inspections are carried out to ensure compliance with food safety standards, including microbial testing, chemical analysis, and sensory evaluations. Any product that does not meet the strict quality criteria is eliminated. Packaging and distribution. The final low salt goose products are carefully packaged to maintain freshness and extend shelf life. The packaging materials used are safe for food contact and preserve the quality and taste. These packaged products are then distributed to local and international markets, ensuring timely delivery and optimum customer satisfaction.
，三件要两，现在面四五十，所以挺划的，挺简单。这个也是挺划，鹅准，全是黄色。Thank you for watching. We appreciate your time and attention. Please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to like, comment and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. We look forward to seeing you again soon.